<laughs> the Epcot International Food and Wine Festival is in full swing here at Walt Disney World, continuing through November 23rd. And with relatively cooler weather coming in, now's the time to start planning your visit. There are some changes this year that you should know about. First, there is no festival center because the building that usually houses it is being renovated, or as they prefer to say here, currently being reimagined. So seminars and tastings that would normally take place there are at the World Show Place this year. Merchandise can be found throughout the park. Finding other things throughout the park might be a little difficult because this year there is no map of the various food marketplaces. Instead, the guidebook simply says what a kiosk is near, such as Future World West for the Cheese Studio in Norway for the Alps, because it would be silly to put the Alps next to Mexico. As for what's new to eat and drink, I spoke to members of the festival's food and beverage team at a media preview, so I'll let them tell you about it. So this year uh, at the Food and Wine Festival, we have some new items, a uh, new marketplace called Alps, which will be out there on the promenade, offering a uh, Swiss raclette cheese over some potatoes and pickles and a little bit of French bread. Uh, in Africa, we have a new uh, uh, vegan dish, which is uh, based after a Kenyan dish called Githiri. So it's curry rice, a little bit of uh, white peas or white beans and pigeon peas, and a little bit of slaw. And our sustainable seafood this year at Coastal Eats is a Pacifico striped bass tostada with a uh, tomotilla and avocado sauce that's going to be really tasty out there on the marketplace. So we got three new desserts this year. We have the uh, fruit and nut energy snack. So this is going to be featured in Active Eats. New in Australia, we have the deconstructed pavlova. So you want to have a nice light dessert to, uh, this year. So it's pastry cream, citrus marinade berries, strawberries, raspberries, blueberries, little strawberry crisp pearls, and some lemon myrtle dusted meringues. And lastly, in the new marketplace, we have a lemon blueberry French pan tart. So it's a lemon tart with blueberries, fresh blueberries, French pan cream, and a little creme fresh cream on top. We are also introducing a, the three most popular mimosas that we had last year, but we are also putting them in a beer flight, sort of in a, in a, in a mimosa flight, I'm sorry. For Alps this year, we'll be introducing our rosé uh, from Switzerland. First time ever for Coastal Eats. We've never had a beer there before. Uh, if you like a Moscow Mule, well, you will enjoy this one because actually it's a Moscow Mule, but as a beer. I like the vegan dish from Africa. The spicing was forward and the portion was ample. The striped bass tostada from Coastal Eats was good too. The raclette was okay, though I'm not sure they need those heat lamps to melt the cheese in Florida. I also really liked the jerk spice chicken from Islands of the Caribbean. And I would have liked Thailand's shrimp and cold noodle dish if different noodles had been used. But I didn't care much for the impossible cottage pie. It just didn't taste like much. And while some people always have to have the cheddar cheese soup from Canada, I never leave the festival without the escargot from France. This year they're baked in a croissant and just as delicious as always. And as always, I recommend that you make one complete loop around the World Showcase first and scope out the various food and beverage options. Then make your stops on the second loop. Ultimately, you'll save yourself some money and the exercise will be good for you too. From the Epcot International Food and Wine Festival at Walt Disney World, I'm Scott Joseph.